Great. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the San Francisco County Transportation Authority's town hall on a new expenditure plan for the existing half cent transportation sales tax. My name is Michelle Beaulieu, and I'm the project manager for this effort at the Transportation Authority. I'd like to kick things off by introducing the other members of our team. So from the Transportation Authority, we also have Kaylee Lyons, Senior Transportation Planner, and Maria Lombardo, Chief Deputy Director. And from our consulting team, we have Jenny Zhao and Emmy Kim from Civic Edge, and Pujo Rajani and Elise Wizorek from N2 Action. Uh, lastly, I wanted to note that the Transportation Authority Board established a committee to support this effort. So I just wanted to see if any expenditure plan advisory committee members are here. Um, but seeing none, uh, welcome. We are hosting this town hall, seeking your input on the draft new expenditure plan that we've been working on. This is not the final plan, and we're looking for your opinions on the proposed programs to help build the final plan. I wanna note that we also have a raffle going as part of the event, and at the end of the presentation, we'll circulate a link where you can enter your email address if you'd like to enter the raffle. We'll be posting the presentation online after the event, and we are recording the event as well. I'm gonna kick things off with a little bit of Zoom etiquette, so I'll hand this over to Pooja. Thank you. Um, just a couple of reminders for folks um, to raise your hand, please uh, click raise your hand on your computer or if you're dialing in, you press star nine. Um, to speak right now, everybody's unmute is muted. So to unmute yourself, please um, unmute on the computer as well as if you're on your phone, press star nine, star six actually, sorry. And if you're having trouble, uh, please send us a chat and you can actually see it at the bottom bar. There's a chat, you can click on chat and the chat will only go to the project team members. And uh, for us to be able to sort of know and call on you, please update your name. You can go by clicking on your photo and there are like three bars. And if you click on it, there's a rename option on there. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Pooja. So this meeting will start with a presentation from the Transportation Authority about the current draft expenditure plan. Then we'll move on to a Q&A session where we can take clarifying questions before we move into discussion. And that's where we'll be looking for your feedback on this proposal. So a little background, the half cent sales tax has been in place since 1990, and the current expenditure plan has been in place since 2003. And the expenditure plan tells voters how the sales tax funds will be spent, who can receive the funds, and how the program will be administered. So to date, the sales tax has done a ton of things. It has helped the SFMTA replace their entire fleet of buses, light rail, and paratransit vehicles. Um, and it supports our, our regional transit providers as well. So for example, sales tax funds have helped BART connect its Balboa Park station with a new Muni platform and paid to improve lighting and signage. It's also helped rehabilitate Caltrans locomotives. The sales tax is also an important funding source for paratransit operations, serving San Francisco's seniors and people with disabilities. Um, it helped rebuild the Presidio Parkway, the approach to the Golden Gate Bridge, and we're funding paving projects, upgrading and installing new traffic signals and signs in every district. And the sales tax really has funded projects in every corner of the city, from bike lanes and sidewalks to street trees to traffic calming projects, which improve safety for all road users. And the sales tax is primarily used to fund capital projects. Uh, it can fund both long-term improvements and the quick build projects that you may have seen in your neighborhood, which include paint and flexible soft hit posts. So what are we doing right now? We're currently planning to bring a new 30-year expenditure plan to the voters of San Francisco in 2022. This would keep the same half cent sales tax for transportation without increasing the tax rate but it would establish a new set, a new set of pro programs and projects for the use of the funds over the next 30 years. And there's a number of reasons that we wanna to go to the voters now. All but one of the major capital projects are complete or under construction from the existing expenditure plan. And many of the programs will be running out of funds in the next couple of years, like muni vehicle repair and replacement or traffic calming. Establishing a new expenditure plan will allow us to replenish those ongoing programs, continuing project delivery, and maintaining the jobs, which is really crucial to our city's COVID economic recovery. Um, plus, there are new and emerging priorities that we can capture in a new expenditure plan, such as the next generation of major capital projects, upgrades to Muni's train control system, 
freeway management and freeway redesign. This can cue the city up for competitive funding sources by providing, providing seed funding or a, a local match funding. Um, so I'm gonna hand this over to Kaylee Lyons to talk a little bit more about what we're working on for this new expenditure plan. Thanks so much, Michelle. So as we develop a new expenditure plan, we're drawing on outreach that has been done for other efforts, such as Connect SF and the San Francisco Transportation Plan, as well as doing outreach specific to the new expenditure plan, such as this town hall. So far, we've conducted some one-on-one -on -one interviews with community-based organizations and held three focus groups, one each in Spanish, Chinese, and Russian in partnership with trusted community-based organizations. And these were really focused on seeking feedback from monolingual communities who may not typically engage in transportation planning. And then we're holding town halls like this, and we appreciate you spending your time with us. And we also have an online survey available in multiple languages, and we're happy to make presentations to groups that are interested. And overall, we're really hearing a lot of different things so far. There are varied needs and desires from different communities based in different parts of the city. Next slide. And so this draft plan was put together to help the city see a variety of benefits in order to address those different needs that we are hearing about across the city. The draft expenditure plan will help deliver safer, smoother streets and more reliable transit, as well as reduce congestion and improve air quality. And the draft plan includes $2.4 billion for the transportation system over the next 30 years. And we'll go through the proposed program over the next few slides. We're really looking for your feedback on this proposal. And a lot of what's being recommended would continue to fund ongoing programs such as traffic calming or street resurfacing, but we've also incorporated some new programs as well. And here's Michelle to start talking about some of those. Thank you, Kaylee. Um, so starting things off to make transit safer and more reliable, the draft expenditure plan proposes funding for new muni vehicles and for facilities to help maintain those vehicles, which can be, you can see here, um, and for other maintenance and rehabilitation projects for muni, for BART, and for Caltrain. And it's essential that we invest in maintaining our transit infrastructure to prevent breakdowns and delays to the system. Uh, the draft plan would also fund improvements to the transit system that provide direct benefits to the riders like improvements at stations or bus stops, including accessibility improvements, such as new elevators, um, which, which make the system more usable for seniors, people with disabilities, uh, people with strollers, et cetera. There are also some bigger transit investments in the draft plan that are designed to make system-wide improvements to ease crowding, crowding, to improve transit reliability, and to increase rider capacity, again, on Muni, BART, and Caltrain. So that could include red lanes for Muni, improvements to the train control systems, or new vehicles for expanded fleets. Prior to the, prior to the pandemic, we saw that transit crowding was really a significant issue, particularly during rush hours. And we know that as the economy recovers and as the city's population grows over the next 30 years, we're really going to need these investments to accommodate new trips. As Kaylee mentioned, one of the benefits of the proposed plan is safer, smoother streets. And the draft plan includes funding for street resurfacing, for bicycle and pedestrian improvements, for traffic calming and other street safety improvements that will benefit all of the users of our streets. And these programs would continue to fund some successful programs from the existing expenditure plan, um, which funded the crosswalk you can see here on Clement. Uh, the bike lanes on Folsom and new street pavement really across the entire city. So I'm gonna switch back to Kaylee now to talk about the rest of the programs in the draft expenditure plan. Thanks, Michelle. And staying with streets and freeways for a moment, the draft plan also includes planning, community engagement and project development for transformative multimodal improvements that are really designed to reconnect communities and repair the harm that was created by past freeway and street projects. Examples include redesigning major interchanges or adding new connections across freeways. And we can see here two examples, one with the Presidio Parkway and then redesigning Octavia Boulevard after tearing down the central freeway. And safety improvements where freeway ramps touch down onto city streets are also included. 
And then we are supporting seniors and people with disabilities by continuing to fund paratransit, helping them get around the city safely. And we know that older adults are the fastest growing age group within San Francisco, so this will continue to be important. And then we would have funding for neighborhood scale, community-based and citywide planning, as well as funding to help implement some of the recommendations that come out of those planning efforts. Projects typically address street safety, improve access to transit and encourage walking and biking among others. And then in order to reduce congestion, and improve air quality, programs that focus on shifting trips to sustainable modes and shifting travel to less crowded times are also included. This may include promoting walking and biking to school with activities like Safe Routes to School programs, a project like BART Perks that incentivizes riders to shift their trips to less crowded times, or the Emergency Ride Home program that provides you with a trip home at the end of the day if you took transit, for example, but now need to get home to a sick family member. And with that, I think, Michelle, it's back over to you. Great, thank you so much, Kaylee. Um, and thanks everyone. So we know that was quite a bit of material that we just shared with you. And um, we're happy to take questions about what you've just seen. After this, we'll be having a discussion about what you think about this proposal. So right now we're looking for clarifying questions if something wasn't clear. Um, so I am not seeing any questions, so we can move on to the discussion. So the reason that we're holding this town hall today is because we want to hear from you. We're interested to know what you think of the proposed programs for the draft expenditure plan, and we want to know if there's anything else that you'd like to see included. If you'd like more information about what you've seen today, you can visit our website, sfcta.org slash expenditure plan, or you can email the whole team at expenditure plan at sfcta.org. We have regular expenditure plan advisory committees, which are posted. You can find the meeting information on the website. And you can also attend our community advisory committee and board meetings. And the information about those meetings is also available at sfcta.org. OK, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. That concludes our presentation. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs>